Economic and political turmoil, fueled by Enlightenment ideals, leads to an all-out revolution in the most advanced country in the world. Louis XVI and his government is overthrown and chaos ensues. The Public Safety Administration is established by revolutionary leaders, but only works at eliminating enemies of the revolution, rather than trying to solve the problems that caused the French Revolution. The French Revolution was possibly one of the most influential events to occur in modern history, and when the revolution finally comes to an end, the country of France looks to one man, Napoleon Bonaparte. To what extent does Napoleon solve the problems that caused the French Revolution? But first, in order to answer this question, we'll have to look at what actually caused the French Revolution. There were several economic reasons for the French Revolution. At the time, the country's economy was undergoing extreme inflation due to the expensive cost of supporting the Americans during the War of Independence. The French had sent troops and equipment to America, as well as building up a navy that was strong enough to rival the British at sea. And obviously this aid got the results that they wanted, but it had also cost the French monarchy's budget to dry up. And due to the inflation, the price on common commodities such as bread was increasingly uh, rising, and more than 80% of the country's population, who were members of the Third Estate, could not keep up with these prices which obviously would cause great discontent among both the rural and urban settlers. There were several reasons that the people of the Third Estate could not keep up with the rising prices. And this is the, um, the low wages at the time, the high taxes since the common people were basically the only ones that were being taxed. And also a lot of the farmers did not own the land that they farmed and were forced to pay extremely high fees to be allowed to grow and harvest the crops. The king's failure to keep the parliament on his side and the failure to raise enough money to reverse the economy were some of the reasons of the beginning of the French Revolution. From a social and political standpoint, I would say the French Revolution was caused from the uprising of enlightenment and revolutionary ideas, which pushed for a change in government structure. One issue that was focused on was the difference in social status. You know, there was a clear divide between the nobles, the clergy, and the rest of society. The nobles and the clergy were considered high class, and because of that, they had many benefits, which included tax exemptions and representation in the government. The common people, which included the peasants, were heavily taxed and had little to no power and the government structure. And once serious financial problems started to occur, the divide between classes became more and more obvious, which also fueled the development of enlightenment and revolutionary ideas. For this, individuals such as Rousseau, Montesquieu, and Robespierre all expressed in some form that separation of power and individual equality were needed for France. Man is born free and everywhere he is in chains. One thinks himself the master of others and still remains a greater slave than they. Publications such as this fuel public rage towards the monarchy and thus, from a social and political standpoint, it played one of the most important parts in causing the French Revolution. In 1799, Napoleon uses military force to stage a coup d'etat, yeah. the coup d'etat premier, to gain control of the French government, and by 1804, Napoleon is able to crown himself Emperor of France. So, how does Napoleon try to solve the problems that caused the French Revolution? Once Napoleon seized power, he did many things in an attempt to fix the economy. He rebuilt the infrastructure of France, meaning roads, canals, and bridges, which aided trade significantly. Also, he placed tariffs against foreign goods and subsidies or loans to French businesses in an attempt to increase domestic industry and small business. In his legal reforms, he reformed the systems of weights and measures, which also aided trade significantly both in France and in the rest of the world, 
By providing a standard by which merchants would weigh and measure goods in, in an attempt to uh, obtain their true value. Napoleon also reformed the currency and created a national bank in France. But with his creation of the continental system that covered not only France but the rest of the continental Europe that was under his control, hence the name, the continental system, Napoleon banned the import of any British goods. It was designed to help the French economy by hurting the British economy and in turn forced European countries to trade with France instead of Britain. After all, this, does not, this did not work because the British Empire banned imports from the continental Europe in response, which clearly hurt the European economy. Furthermore, all trade had to be performed by land, which increased cost of transportation, and a basic economic rule is that when the cost of transportation increases, so does the cost of the good, which clearly hurts the economy. So, Doug, overall, I do not believe that Napoleon was successful in solving the economic problems of the French Revolution, mainly because of his decision to establish the continental system in an attempt to destroy the British economy and eliminate the French rival. During Napoleon's reign of France, Napoleon was able to solve many of the social problems that were issues during the French Revolution. For example, Napoleon abolished the system of social class within France, by making law applicable to every individual through his Napoleonic Code. This meant that rich members of society were not exempt from paying taxes. From this, Napoleon was able to satisfy peasants and the middle class. Furthermore, peasants were given land, and the middle class were generally satisfied with many of Napoleon's reforms. The Napoleonic Code also granted many other civil liberties. Uh, a couple of these include positions were granted to individuals who were most qualified, and uncontrollable factors such as birth and social status uh, became disregarded. There was also freedom of religion, and rights for women were beginning as well. From all these, Napoleon was able to address many of the concerns surrounding ind individual rights during uh, the French Revolution. So, to what extent does Napoleon solve the problems that caused the French Revolution? I'd say about 50 halfway, he solved about 50% of them. Uh, he was successful with the social and political problems by basically ending class warfare, uh, he abolished serfdom, and made jobs based on merit, so it doesn't matter what family you were born into, but uh, your level of education, and uh, all that good stuff. However, Napoleon did not solve the economic problems to any extent, and actually made them worse uh, because he spent more money on the military, um, which is one of the main reasons uh, the French monarch government uh, went bankrupt in the first place that caused the revolution, and also he s created the con continental system that uh, basically ended all trade with any non-continental European uh, country, which just made Great Britain put a blockade on the continent of Europe, basically ending all trade by water, so it was all by land, which increased costs and all that stuff. Um, so, Napoleon was successfully able to solve the social and political problems by eliminating the social hierarchies through the Napoleonic Codes, however, fails to solve the economic problems by worsening them using the continental system and excess military spending. For all of us here at News Center 4, I'm Ron Burgundy. You stay classy, San Diego.